Coming up, are you from the search engine optimization world, but you're looking to get into app store optimization? Well, I'm gonna break down ASO into SEO terms so that you can finally get a grasp on how to optimize your apps for search. Stay tuned. What is up App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.com, the place we are the agency that is known for growth hacking apps in the app store and helping clients get featured by Apple and getting them higher ranks and more organic downloads through ASO, App Store Optimization. And we also have an academy. So if you don't want to look, if you're not looking to hire an agency, then you can learn our entire process through AppMastersAcademy.com. So if you're looking to learn more, go check out AppMasters.com. Com. But in this video, I'm going to share with you ASO versus SEO. And I talk to a lot of people who have that digital marketing background from the SEO world, but they're kind of new to this ASO thing and looking to figure out like, hey, what does this mean? What, how do I optimize the keywords? Where do I put them? Well, I'm going to break it down all for you side by side so you can see SEO terms and how that translates into ASO, App Store Optimization. Okay, so let's get into it. Well, here is my beautiful infographic that breaks down SEO terms and how that translates into ASO. And first off, let's get into it with the title. So this is what you guys are familiar with from the SEO terms. You want great keywords to the left of your domain. So it's usually app marketing agency dash app masters, right? That's how we're going to do it on the web. But in the app store, this is your app name. So this is your app name, this is your app title. And a lot of times when I talk to some of the newer people, they say, hey, I don't wanna change my app name. Well, I'm not changing your app name, just like I wouldn't change your domain name, right? All I'm doing is adding certain keywords to that app name. And generally on the web, we usually put the most preferred keywords onto the left and then leave our domain or brand name onto the right right? Because Google tends to rank that higher. And same thing goes with the ASO. So if you're trying to rank for meditation, for example, I might put meditation dash calm rather than calm dash meditation. In the app store, we generally I don't know why this is the case, but generally we have our app name, which is what we're calling our brand name dash the keywords that we're targeting. So generally it's actually better to flip it and have the keywords you're targeting to the left of your actual app name or slash brand name, okay? So what I generally do for this app name and title is have the most relevant keywords that have high traffic as well. So meditation's probably gonna be the highest if I'm calm and mindfulness and so forth, they're gonna go down, but most people are gonna be searching for meditation. That's gonna be the highest ranked one. It's obviously gonna be the most competitive as well. So if I'm a brand new app and trying to get into the meditation space, I might not target that particular keyword. I might go focus on other things that I'm gonna share with you in this video first and then go after that more aggressive keywords. If I'm a brand new app, I try to find things that are a little bit less competition and I put them into the app name. I append it to my app name. Okay, so app name or app title is what I'm calling it. Just like SEO, it has the highest weight. So you want your most relevant keywords there that will help you rank and drive more organic downloads. All right, let's move on into the next thing. So H1 tags, right? These are generally what we try to use once or twice. We don't want to overload it on the web. We have H1 tags that sort of help the app name. So for targeting app marketing agency, we might use an app in the H1 tag on the web, we might put app marketing agency specializing growth hacking, right? That's going to be part of our H1 tag because again, we're trying to really put more emphasis on those keywords by using them in their app title, in our title, on the web title, and also in the H1 tags. Same thing goes with ASO. So we have on the ASO side of things, it's a subtitle or a short description on Google Play. So on iOS, it's going to be subtitle. On Google Play, it's going to be short description. And generally what I do is I might repeat certain keywords in there for that I have in the title and that tends to work, but also I try to have more relevant keywords too. So if there's certain phrases or like, let's say meditation and guided meditation, right? I want that. So I might have meditation in the app title and I might have guided meditation in the subtitle. So I'm expanding upon a phrase, but I'm still having the keyword that I want 
from the app title. So I'm sort of repeating, but also expanding. That's generally what I do. And that's definitely what I do on Google Play side of things is I try to repeat whatever keywords I'm using in the app title. Because on Google Play, you have a, a lot more room. You have 80 characters, whereas on Apple, you have 30 characters. And so I'm gonna focus on still high traffic keywords, but with a little bit less competition because the weight and the priority list from a keyword rankings perspective is not as high as the app name. So I'm gonna repeat whatever I said in the app name, maybe on iOS, definitely on Google Play, but I'm also gonna focus on lower traffic keywords as well so that I can still, that have decent traffic on Google Play that I can still pretty much rank for. So the next one is content, okay? This is where you're on the web, you're gonna expand on your title, on your H1 tags, you're gonna put different long phrases in there. So you're just doing all the things that you can to help everything that you're already optimizing for. So you might actually be starting on the website, starting to repeat some of those phrases that you're already using in the title and in the H1 tags. Now on the app side of things, on the mobile side of things, you don't need to repeat anything. So generally what I do is I expand on the keywords that I'm using already in the app name and in the subtitle. So for instance, if I'm using meditation, I might have sub guided meditation in the subtitle or short description. And the long description, let's say the keyword phrase is meditation and relaxation, right? That I'm targeting. So I'm just gonna put, I'm not gonna repeat meditation. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put relaxation in there. So I'm expanding, generally what I'd use this keyword and long description phase in there, which is very relevant to what the content side of the web is, is ex try to expand on what I already have in the short, in the subtitle and short description and in the app name and app title. And these are keywords that I generally have lower competition, but medium traffic scores. So let's say there was mindfulness, for example, that I found that had lower competition and really good traffic still. That is a keyword that I might use in the keyword field rather than in the short description because I know I'm gonna rank for it even though I only have it in the keyword field. Now on the Google Play side, it's gonna be in your long description. So it is very similar to the content of a page, like a blog post, for instance. It feels very similar because you're gonna to have to repeat certain keywords that you really wanna rank for. You're gonna repeat certain keywords that you already have in your app name and in your subtitle. But on the iOS side, you don't have to repeat. Now iOS description, I know this is a question I get asked a lot too. We haven't seen signs that it's being indexed. It might be something that you might wanna test. You know, I would take it step by step and test a little bit more, but from what we've seen right now and from what Apple has been reporting, it's not really indexed. So you, on the iOS side, you really wanna focus on the keyword meta field and on the Google Play side, you wanna focus on the long description. Next up, we have backlinks. Backlinks on the website of things, when the optimization is all good, let's say we both know all the SEO tricks, we're both optimized for it, well, backlinks. Now Google starts saying, okay, well, which web page, which website has a lot more backlinks? Because then they're saying, okay, well this website, because of all the backlinks, it has higher priority. Like a lot of people are linking to it, so it must produce good content. We're gonna, re we're gonna, we're gonna rank it higher for this particular keyword because of all the backlinks. Now, how does that translate to ASO? It's gonna be ratings and reviews. I will say one thing, that backlinks on Google Play, Google Play does say that, hey, they're starting to incorporate backlinks to your Google Play listing. But I'll tell you, if you focus on ratings and reviews, you're probably gonna rank better than if you just focus on getting more and more backlinks. Because if you're familiar with SEO, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to get all these backlinks. So what I would focus on is making sure that you are regularly asking your users for reviews, so that there's an iOS prompt that you can use on the Google Play site. I don't know if there's a prompt that you can do. But definitely make sure you, you're asking your users. And don't feel bad about it, right? Like you built a really good app that you should be proud of. So make sure if they're enjoying it, ask them and don't wait too long to ask them. Ask them, be a little bit more aggressive about it, right? Just like the tip jar, you see it right as you pay. You're like, hey, it's right there. Do you wanna leave a tip? I'm kinda of like, all right, I'll throw a couple of dollars in there. I always feel bad for not leaving a tip. But that's sort of the mindset you need to have, that you need to be front and center with asking for these ratings because from an ASO perspective, you're gonna do the best. Like everybody knows the tricks. Hey, let's have meditation in the app title. Let's have meditation in the subtitle. Let's do this on the... So when all the optimization is equal, 
guess what's going to get you above your competition? It's when you have a lot of ratings, you have a good lot, a lot of reviews too, and that's going to really, really help you rank better for your keywords. And lastly, I thought this was a point that I wanted to drive home with because I didn't want to give you just blanketed ASO advice, cross links. And when I say cross links on the website, what you normally do is because you want to keep your users who came in through organic search on your website, right? That's going to help out as well. And you want to keep them on your website. What you try to do is cross link to different sections of your website. So you drove them in into, let's say app marketing, a mistakes you make when you're hiring an app marketing agency. That was the keyword that they came in through a search. And then you have links on that blog post to like, you know, the best app marketing campaigns, another blog post. So you're keeping the user onto your website as long as possible. And you're cross linking different articles and different sections of your website on the main, on one of the pages. So it's just linking to different pages so that they stay on your website. Well, with cross promotion on the app side of things, this is something that you should definitely be doing. So if you have an app portfolio, you should be, and if there's one app that's driving a ton of downloads, well, you should be using that app to cross promote to other apps. Cause if they like one of your apps, they're definitely gonna like the other ones that you've built, especially if they're complimentary. But don't just stop there. Make sure you're promoting web services. I've got a client that's promoting something on her Shopify site. So we're using the app side of things to drive awareness to her other Shopify site, right? So don't forget about bringing them outside of that. That's a great way of doing it. And also email newsletters. I think this is the biggest fail for app developers and something that we do on the web very well. We try to capture email addresses as much as possible. So it's another way to communicate. I've got another video where I talk about Hotel Tonight, where I liked a hotel and then suddenly I got an email saying, hey, are you still looking to stay at this hotel? So it's another way of communication that one can bring users back into your app and make any type of conversion that you want, but also to cross promote other services that you have, other websites, other products, anything else that you might have, you know, like don't forget to grab that email address because it is one of the best ways to communicate, not just through push notifications, but also bringing them back, re-engaging with them. And guess what the email provides as well? Retargeting or lookalike campaigns. So all these are very beneficial when you're trying to, one, re-engage your user, or two, trying to find users that are the best users, your best users. So if you're looking to do a Facebook lookalike campaign, well, those email addresses are gonna come in very handy. So don't forget about that as well. All right, guys, that's it. Simple tips, simple terms that you might be already familiar with from the search engine optimization world, broken down and translated into the world of apps. So I hope that was useful for you. If you are liking the content here, make sure you hit subscribe because we're trying to really grow the channel and the more subscribers, the more content that we can continually pump out for you guys. And if you're looking to hire somebody to help you with your app marketing, go check us out. It is appmasters.com. If you want to learn about us, you don't have a lot of money to spend. Well, then go check out appmastersacademy.com. If you just go to appmasters.com, you'll find all the links that I've been talking about. And I will link up this infographic into the description so you can have it whenever you darn want. Maybe you should print it out and put it on your wall and then put my picture right by it. All right. Until next time, I will see you on the next video. Want to see the best tools to use when it comes to ASO? Well, I've got this video that'll show you the iOS side of things. And I've got this video that's going to show you the Google Play side of things. Check them out.